organizing your course with content folders in Blackboard. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to organize your course content in Blackboard in a way that's going to make it very easy and consistent for your students to be able to navigate through your course content and to find exactly what they need when they need it. I'm going to begin by taking you into a best practices demonstration course for faculty. And all faculty are enrolled into this course at the beginning of the semester. If you don't see it in your course list, then ask your ed tech director about it. Now, keep in mind that this course is demonstrating how a fully online, completely built out course would look. If you're just beginning to use Blackboard, then obviously you're not going to have quite as much content as is shown in this particular course. If I click on course content, all of the content in this course is organized inside content folders. There's a term project assignment that actually doesn't fall within any of the individual units. There's a midterm exam that divides up the middle of the course, and then at the end, there's a final exam. Let me begin by opening up one of the unit folders. Now, keep in mind, you don't need to necessarily name them by units. They can be units, they can be by chapters, by topic, they could be by weeks. Whatever it is that you want to use in order to organize your structure is fine, as long as it's consistently named. So I'm going to open up Unit 1. You can see that I have a variety of different types of content in here. It should always start with an introduction and or objectives. There's a pretest. There are a couple of subfolders, which is where the readings and media and assignments live in this course. And then there's a discussion board link and a few other things. The thing I want to draw to your attention here, though, is the naming and the sequencing of this content. This is Unit 1. Let's take a look at Unit 2. You're going to see it looks virtually identical to Unit 1. The naming is the same. The sequencing of the content is the same. So once a student knows how to navigate one content folder, they know how to navigate all of the content folders. Let's take this concept and let me show you how to actually build this in your own course. I'm going to open up a sample course that I have here. And when I click on course content, you'll see I already have a unit one folder created. Let's open this up and take a look. So I don't have too much in here. I have a blank page with unit outcomes, a PowerPoint PDF that I uploaded. I have a link to a website. You can tell that it's a link because it's got this little link icon here. And if I open that up, it launches a website in a new tab. And I also have a quiz and an assignment. Something that's a little bit more advanced, but you'll get to that later on. So how would I build something like this? Well, let's go back to course content and start from the beginning. First, I'll click build content. Then I'll click content folder. Now to keep things consistent, I'm simply going to call this unit two. Now faculty are often tempted to put in a lot of text in the description for the folder, or sometimes they put in large decorative graphics. We strongly recommend that you do neither of those things. Keep in mind that when your students are looking at your course using the mobile application for Blackboard, they may not see any of the text that is shown in the description for the folder. So you never want to put anything that's very important there. All I'm going to do here is click Submit. And now I have my content folder. Now, what if I had made a typo on the title? I had misspelled the word unit, for example. Let me show you how I would make a change to that. I would click this little drop down arrow, which is called the action arrow, and I'll select edit. And you can see that I also have a number of different options here. But for now, let's look at edit. It opens up the edit content folder form again, and I could make whatever changes I needed here. And you could use the select date and time restrictions, and you could set the date after which you want a particular folder to display. So for example, let's say that you want a new folder to display every week you would set the date that you wanted that folder to automatically appear to your students. You don't need to use the display until date. As a general rule, faculty don't close units once they're open. Now it's time to actually populate this folder. You don't click on the folder icon, and you don't click on the drop-down arrow. In order to open a folder and actually put content in it, you click right on the title of the folder. Now let's begin by building a blank page that has our objectives. I click Build Content, and I select blank page. And I'm going to call this Unit 1 Outcomes. 
and of course I could use the content editor up here in order to apply some formatting to it if I wanted to. I could make the text a little bit bigger. I could make it a bulleted list. Remember that you can just use these little drop down arrows to the right to expand or collapse the content menu. Now I'm all set with this blank page and I click submit. Now I'm going to upload a PDF of the PowerPoint for this unit. So once again, I click Build Content and select File. Now I'm going to navigate to the file that I want to upload. I'm going to click Browse My Computer, and I've navigated to the Unit 2 PowerPoint PDF. So I click that to select it, and then click Open. Now, note that you do need to actually give it a name. It's not going to automatically fill in the name with the name of the file. This is because oftentimes people abbreviate file names. Think in terms of naming consistency for all of your files that you're uploading. So in this case, I'm going to call it Unit 1 PowerPoint, and let's say it's for Chapters 1 and 2. Now I'm going to click Submit. Let's say that the next thing I want to do is to create a link to a website. Now you can see that I already have the websites that I'm going to link to open in tabs up at the top. I have a link to a website from the History Channel about the American Revolution and I have a link to a YouTube channel. I already have my sites open, so I'm going to go back. Notice that I have multiple tabs here. I'm going to go back to the Blackboard tab. Now, how do I create a web link? Well, I click Build, and I scroll down, and I select Web Link from the drop-down. So I have to give it a name, and then I have to paste in the URL. This website is called American Revolution Causes and Timeline. Now I need to go and get the website address or URL and I'm going to copy it and then paste it into the URL field. So to do that all I do is open up the website, click my cursor once in the field with the web address or URL, right click and select copy and now this address is in my temporary electronic clipboard ready to be pasted someplace. I click back on the Blackboard tab now I click into the URL field, right click, and select Paste. Now if I want to, I can put a description here of what the students will be seeing, or I can simply click Submit. And now I have a link to that website. The next thing I want to do is create a web link, but this time to a YouTube channel. It's exactly the same process. First I navigate to the channel and open it up. It's in a new tab in my web browser. Once again, I click once on the URL, I right click, select copy, click back on my Blackboard tab, and now I'm going to go to build content and select web link. I'm going to call this video American Revolution Animated Map. So now I'm going to right click and select paste, click submit, and now I have populated my content folder with a blank page, with an uploaded file, and with two web links. Now if for example I had built a test and this is a little bit more advanced, but I'll show you how to do it. Let's say that I had built a test that I wanted to deliver in Unit 1 or a quiz. If that test had already been created and it was available, I could click Assessments, Test. I'll select Unit 2 Quiz and click Submit. Now here I would have to fill in all of the test options. I'm not going to do all of that now. All I'm going to do is to make it available to students by clicking Yes. And then I'll click Submit. And that's how you add a unit quiz into a folder. Now, if I wanted to create an assignment, I could do that as well. I would click Assessments, and then I would click Assignment, and then I could build an assignment. So learning how to create tests and assignments are separate tools, but I wanted to show you what the process would be or how you would go about finding options to add those assessments into a content folder. I hope this video is helpful and that it enables you to begin organizing your content in your course in a way that's easy for you to manage and also easy for your students to navigate.